June, and the Secretary of State of the United States comes to Toronto to meet his new Canadian counterpart. To Canada's new Minister for External Affairs, Joe Clark, the sunshine is something of a symbol, a symbol of the new emphasis the Conservative government is placing on improved relations with the United States. Schultz is obviously impressed. Uh, we have a gigantic stake in the United States relationship. Clark says it's inevitable that Canada and the United States will have disagreements, but he says in the future there will be a difference. But our new government intends to follow the advice of former President Ford, and he said that we can disagree without being disagreeable. The first item on the agenda, a two-hour discussion of the international economic situation. Clark reaffirmed Canada's commitment to deal with the United States on a pragmatic rather than an ideological basis. A not too subtle shot at the Trudeau Liberals who angered the Americans with the national energy program and policies restricting foreign investment. This evening, Clark hosted a glittering dinner for Schultz. Among the guests, prominent conservatives and business leaders who support this new approach to the United States. If it improves the relationship and leads to, to broader trade, that can't help but be good for our, for our economy. I'm all in favor of it. I think the whole climate uh, that's being established will make it much more conducive both for trade and for investment to flow back and forth across the border, which has to be great for citizens and great for our number one problem, which is unemployment. There's, there's no doubt that there's a real change happening. Uh, it doesn't mean by any stretch of the imagination that we're going to be crawling to the Americans on all fours. It means simply that we're going to be discussing things like mature adults without any uh, hang-ups that seem to preoccupy the previous government. Today the theme is conciliation, healing old wounds. Tomorrow will be more difficult. That's when Clark and Schultz get down to discussing issues like east-west relations, arms control, the U.S. role in Central America, and Canada's major bilateral concerns the fisheries dispute and acid rain. Mike Duffy, CBC News, Toronto. Followed particles around it. The particles could be planets. All this is happening about 500 trillion kilometers from our sun. If there is one solar system beyond ours, scientists say there are probably more. And that means a greater chance that there are, there is more life. Hello? Where is the beast? <laughs> Quebec's priority this session is, once again, the economy. Nothing new there. But there is something very different about this new session. Example, the federal government said Levesque will find in Quebec a government entirely ready to foster harmonious relations. Also, the Parti Québécois must act, said Levesque, to protect and defend the interests of Quebec in the federal system. On the one hand, we're not there to make the federal system look as bad as possible, to make it work as bad as possible. We've always said that we do our best inside the system. On the surface, that doesn't sound like the PQ at all. But Lebec has been moving in that direction ever since the federal election. The PQ grassroots, these are the party workers, the people who believe that working for the PQ is working for independence. Here, Lebec's new approach to Canada is getting a mixed review. Some, a few, don't care. To me, it's a good decision. I think I have faith in that man. I always have. But others just cannot imagine the PQ not campaigning on independence. The ideas of independence is so strongly attached to the Parti Québécois that you just can't separate them. So Levesque is kind of changing his mind right now. So you do agree with me that a year from now he might change his mind again? By downplaying independence, Levesque is being politically practical. Right now, he's in trouble. The latest poll gives the provincial liberals 58% of the vote, the PQ an embarrassing 23%. Most Quebecers still like Levesque. It's his option they can't accept, and the opposition knows it. We need political stability. And with the Parti Québécois in power, we don't have that political stability. We have a party which is having in its program the separation of this province. So Levesque's in an extremely delicate position, a popular premier with a militant party and with what now seems to be a hopelessly unpopular option. It looks impossible, but Levesque gets to choose the election date and he has one more legislative session to try to turn things around. Tom Kennedy, CBC News, Quebec City. The George Bush's debate with Geraldine Ferraro last Thursday. And for somebody to suggest, as our two opponents have, that these men died in shame, 
They better not tell the parents of those young Marines. The Democrats were incensed. And we grieve for their families as much as you do. <laughs> Mr. Bush, apologize today for that remark. But Bush wouldn't. And he couldn't find one instance of the Democrats talking about shame. But they did talk about the U.S. being humiliated in Lebanon, and Bush used that to bolster his case with a dictionary. Let me direct Mr. Mondale's attention to Webster's International, where humiliation is defined as degradation, disgrace, and shame. It not only made the Democrats angrier, it also made Bush's boss, Ronald Reagan, uneasy. And unease compounded when Bush's wife, Dorothy, was quoted as saying that Ferraro was a rich bitch. A sign of the White House concern was the presence today in the Bush entourage of Lynn Nofziger, Reagan's top troubleshooter. Bush joked about the controversy. Barbara and I almost didn't make it tonight. We were up in our room washing our mouths out with soap. But he didn't apologize, and Mondale kept up the pressure. The American people see somebody who's sort of like a political hit-run driver. What it's all about is the patriotism issue. Reagan won the last time by convincing Americans that he was somehow more patriotic and tough than the Democrats. This time around, both campaigns are heavily packaged with the stars and stripes. The Democrats are determined not to be beaten again in the flag-waving department. Joe Schlesinger, CBC News, Washington. Opening of a new chapter in Canadian-United States relations. But uh, when you examine what's happened here in the past two days, there really wasn't much difference between this meeting and previous ones. This morning, for example, on acid rain, Clark pressed Schultz for action, not just more scientific studies of the acid rain problem. You gave me a hard time, frankly, on a lot of subjects, particularly acid rain. But the American response today was the same one they've been giving Canada for years. We feel that it's important to really understand this phenomenon better before you commit gigantic sums of money to it. This was Clark's first meeting with the news media since canceling Bryce Mackesy and Eugene Whalen's ambassadorial appointments. But Clark didn't want to talk about that today. I'll, I'll restrict my comments to uh, matters that were discussed in the bilateral meeting. I'd be fascinated to know how you deal with ambassadorial appointments. <laughs> uh, don't, don't complicate my life. <laughs> These talks produce no dramatic breakthroughs, but that's not surprising when you consider that the conservative government here has been in power just a month, and the Americans are only weeks away from a presidential election. But there were some positive signs. Canada is studying sectoral free trade. The Americans are aware of Canadian concerns about protectionism. And they also now know that the conservatives are just as concerned about acid rain 